are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> I know the team has been working with you, but good to connect here. Thank you for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> Welcome to the second segment of Qualcomm's The Future Of series. I'm Carl Freund, founder of Cambrian AI Research. And today I'm joined by three panelists to discuss the future of artificial intelligence or AI. Now let's start with some introductions. Uh, Alex, why don't you uh, start us off? Yeah, no problem. My name is Alex Katuzian. I'm a SVP and GM of our mobile compute and infrastructure business unit here at Qualcomm. That should probably keep you pretty busy. Yes, it does. <laughs> Ziad, uh, could you just introduce yourself, please? Sure. My name is Ziad Asker. I lead uh, Snapdragon Technologies and Roadmap Planning. So. Uh, always uh, something exciting going on. <laughs> Great to see you again. Great to see you again. And Clem, please introduce yourself. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Hugging Face. Hugging Face is a little bit less well-known than uh, Qualcomm. <laughs> so as an introduction, it's a platform that uh, 5,000 companies are using today to build machine learning and integrate AI into their products or their workflows. Excellent. Well, welcome to the panel. Really appreciate your time today. Um, so, Alex, why don't, we, why don't we start with you? Um, what, you know, AI is a buzzword. Everybody's got AI. AI is everywhere. Um, but what does it really mean for the consumer uh, or, or the business? Yeah, so um, I, I was just going to step back a little bit and, and explain uh, what we do here at, at Qualcomm. We, we invest a lot in inventing new technologies. And the reason we do that is because we want to try to resolve complexities that exist in today's technologies and systems and solutions. And when we provide our solutions, we work with our ecosystem partners um, to resolve those complexities through bringing the best user experiences to consumers. And, and AI is exactly part of that. And, and without even the consumer knowing, they're getting the best experiences. Uh, you know, today AI exists all around us, but no one really knows it too well. Uh, for example, in the phone, you know, you have, you have the use cases of camera, you have the use cases of uh, uh, connectivity where it can decide which, which um, is the best connection for you, whether it's Wi-Fi or cellular and others. Um, searching for pictures on your phone, um, getting the best shot. You know, we can probably talk about that a little bit later, but getting the best shot, getting the best video. Um, just real-time translation, voice to text, uh, even speech. Um, so people don't realize these things are happening in the background, but it does. And, um, you know, you can extend that into, into the network, too, on Cloud Edge, for example. Um, you know, you can have uh, facial recognition. Um, you can have security-based algorithms. You can have recommendation engines. All of those things are happening without people realizing these are all AI technologies and algorithms running in the background. And uh, in, in our pre, you know, in our, before we started in our, in our pre-discussions, we're talking about how to market AI better so that people understand it with real life examples. And you know, we'll probably get into that discussion a little bit later as well. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes when AI is at its best, it's totally transparent. It just makes things easier to use um, or more functional, like like cameras and smartphones today. Um, Ziad, what do you think is the future for on-device AI? What kind of areas, use cases, do you see as promising? You know, AI is probably the most exciting area, right? If we look at uh, what's happening on the smartphone, there is like so many moving pieces, but AI has enabled those use cases that were not possible on the device, and especially a device that fits in the palm of your hand. Along with that, you know, we've been able to enhance existing use cases that were always there, but they've evolved them in ways that were you know, not possible in the past. Right? So we have a lot of new technologies. We started with speech and audio, a lot of the stuff that you know, Hugging Face is doing, for example. And over time, we've continued to evolve. We did a lot more with camera. We're moving on now doing a heck of a lot more, actually, with uh, video, as we talked about. And now we're moving on to actually do a lot more with graphics, with security. So the cool thing is it's touching every right. vector of yeah. our product, right? right? Makes everything That's better. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, Ziad, just to add, uh, you know, we've been investing in, in AI for the past 10 years, and we're on our sixth generation AI engine, right. which uh, allows us to learn and, and modify as we go along. Uh, and uh, 
I would say we have somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, in the AI-enabled phones, we have like a billion phones out in the market. And we, we, we are constantly learning from, from what's happening and with the work that we're doing with our ecosystem partners to, to in, you know, increase the level of algorithm capability and, and have the consumers enjoy all of these applications that are being developed around it. Actually, that's a very good point that uh, Alex brings up, right? I mean, these use cases, and with the sixth generation AI engine, we actually have 26 tops of performance. By the way, this was performance you could not even get into, you know, like devices yeah. that were standalone quite some, just very yeah. recently. Yeah. So the leaps that we have done over here on AI is just amazing. Yeah. Then on top of that, what we are starting to do now is to combine a few of these technologies together, and the results are actually amazing. You know, Alex talked about this scenario where you can basically have on-device machine translation. That's just unbelievable, right? Because what you can do now is, even though I, I could be talking to a person that does not speak my language, but I have the ability to be able to converse with them, and it's really bridging the gaps, it's bringing people together. Uh, I'll give another great example. So we did this uh, pilot program with India, with Tara, mm. where we actually, uh, attached a small lens on top of the camera of the smartphone, and we could actually figure out uh, if people have diabetic retinopathy, for example, right? Something that's amazing because in those areas, you may not have the ability to go to a doctor right. or doctor or have that uh, right. level of medical care. So the applications are just unbelievable. Yeah. Like Alex said, we enable it, and then yeah. our partners come up with ideas that we might not have even thought about. That's right. So pretty cool. That's right. Very cool, very cool. Let me just follow up on that. Um, you know. Uh, Ziad and Alex, the AI capabilities that Qualcomm has been bringing to your handsets is pretty remarkable, even though luckily largely transparent to the user. But you've taken that technology, the core of that technology and the software, and now starting to enter the data center uh, with the Cloud AI 100. Ziad, what do you see as uh, the impact of AI in the data center and how uh, you see Qualcomm's role will evolve in participating in that. You know, what we've been able to hear, Carl, is we took our pedigree, which is of great and amazing power consumption, while doing a lot of AI processing. We have taken that from mobile, taken all of our learnings, and taking it to the cloud side. And if you look at what some of the major platforms are seeing today, they're seeing a huge problem with the power consumption, where the power is basically doubling every year on the cloud side, right? That's a very big problem. So what we did was we took our uh, expertise, we changed a new architecture, came out with a product that's specifically designed for inferencing. And that's what's given us an ability to be able to show performance at a power level that nobody else can show. So we just you know, launched some data on ML benchmarks, ML commons. Yeah. We have amazing performance at 50 watt, 25 watt numbers. And now you can envision that you know, with a platform like let's say Facebook, where people are uploading you know, videos in the hundreds of thousands and millions at any given point in time, this platform can basically assess, as an example, whether those videos are something that should be going on that platform or not, right? There could be questionable material. Right. So amazing level of applications on recommendations, on language, on natural language processing, and then we're moving into what we call robotics uh, and further into what we call smart cities and even to smart transportation. So it really opens up a lot of new avenues for Qualcomm. Big time. And I would also add strategically what we do is we use our largest channel, which is mobile, and we try to create inventions in mobile and system solutions in mobile that will spiral and get reused in adjacent markets that have the same mobile traits. For example, PCs and XR, auto, uh, and then getting into, into some of the infrastructure-based uh, designs that are there as well, because AI can get used in edge cloud, in some private networks environments, all of those things are, are, are available to us. And as you can see, um, doing that allows us to reuse and modify our core technologies as like a mobile spiral. So the mobile environment creates capabilities that the ecosystem develops on that can bring on new devices and new services and maybe even new OEMs like Hugging Face and others to allow those services to go to the consumers, really all stemming from the mobile environment which we're we're inventing it. So that's that's the kind of strategy that we're trying to follow. That's cool. That's cool, and Alex. And one of the things that comes along with the mobile heritage, of course, is power efficiency. I was talking to a venture capitalist this morning, and his firm projects that the data centers in the world will consume in excess of 
of the world's energy yeah. supply Absolutely. by 2030. Yeah. That's that's astounding. And the environmental impact of that in the warming huge. planet uh, is huge. And so if you can cut the power in half, or in your case, more than half in terms of your technology, it's going to make a big difference, not only in productivity and usability, but in the impact on the environment these new technologies. So, Clint, Clint, let's talk a little bit about hugging face. I mean, you've taken a you know direct com uh, community approach to developing AI models, such as natural language processing and using AI to recognize text and uh, auto generate relevant text, classify text even as it's typed. Why take the community approach? You're asked a different way, differently. What's the advantage of a community-based uh, development environment? Yeah, let's take it like a step back. If you look at any kind of like major technological advancement and what we talked about uh, since the beginning of this conversation, which is democratization of AI, democratization of, of machine learning is a major technology advancement. If you look at all the past technology advancements, they've never been achieved just thanks to one individual, one company, or one organization. Yeah. They've always been the result of yeah. uh, collaborative work from the whole field. That's right. um, and we think that's, that's what's going to happen for, for machine learning, especially because machine learning compared to how you were building software before, machine learning is a science-driven topic, right? It all starts from the scientists that are building new architectures like transformers, uh, which are optimizing models and uh, creating new techniques to make models more efficient. Oh. Uh, and the science community is an open and collaborative field, right? Uh, so what we realized with, with Hugging Face, with trying to build a platform rather than trying to compete with other companies, is that uh, you can have a much bigger impact on the field by, by doing that, uh, because you collaborate with the best scientists all over the world. You collaborate with the uh, best actors like uh, Qualcomm, for example. Uh, we've been collaborating a lot uh, in the past few months with yeah. fantastic Qualcomm teams. Uh, and that's how you're going to achieve such a big technological advancement, probably the biggest technology advancement of the decade, which is democratization of machine learning. I would actually add to that, right? I mean, exactly what Clem is saying. The stuff that you could do pretty much on the server with the tools and the techniques that companies like Hugging Face are putting together and we're working with them on, you can basically make those models a lot more efficient, smaller, compressed, quantized, all those techniques. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it work on a device, a small device like the smartphone. That's the kind of the unique advantage that Qualcomm is able to bring in addition to all the technology. And working with our ISV partners as well to Absolutely. continue the innovation of services that benefit the consumer. That's like really important. We can, if we can create, if we can co-create a platform, for example, with Qualcomm technology, hugging face tool chains, and open that up to the developer community, it would be fantastic. I think the creativity would go up tenfold. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. So. So since you guys interact and support um, and essentially co-design with so many different companies using your core technologies, talk to me about some of the more exciting applications of AI. Where would we see AI appearing in just everyday device usage, uh, not just handsets, but, but other devices that we interact with? Sure, I can take that. I think the, the really cool thing about AI, I think the simple way to look at it is you can basically take that camera or that microphone that you have on your device, whatever that device might be, and you can make it actually understand the stimulus that it's getting. So, you know, in the past, we used to have dumb cameras. They would basically capture the photons of light, and they have no idea what it is. With AI, we're giving those cameras the ability to really understand the, what they're looking at. And not only that, so they can tell that this is a face. They can tell that within that frame, this is a cloth or this is skin. And now you can imagine, right, the things that you can do. You can basically optimize each part of that frame exactly what it ought to look like. That's just one example. But that uh, part of it, and what we didn't talk as much about it is, the device can be active and looking at things 24 hours. We don't have the ability to do that, right? If you can basically process that sound at a very, very low level, at very low power, 
you can do things that nobody else can do. So what we are enabling with our sensing hub, for example, is the ability that if you hear a, a sound in the middle of the night, you know, well, there is an alarm that should be raised based on that. Or you can ascertain if a person is driving in the car and perhaps certain functions should not be allowed on the device. At the same time, we're extending that technology into the example that I gave, right, for uh, smart cities, for example, on the, uh, the Cloud AI 100. Well, you have immense number of cameras that are capturing that video, but nobody can make sense of it. It is really technologies like this that allow you to actually make sense of that and then take action without a person having to sit in front of every camera, which is just impossible. And, and combine that with 5G, then you can split your compute right. environment between the cloud and the actual end user equipment, which means that latencies are going to be low, mm -hmm. bandwidths are large, so you can have unlimited types of uh, calculations and recommendations and recognitions and security in the whole environment that we can create around to be much easier to deal with versus a slower connection. I think the case that Alex talked about, right, this is like 5G and AI really being hand in hand. That's and right. each makes actually the other one better. I always say that. That's because right. You can actually apply AI to your modem also yeah. in the 5G domain to actually be able to make it work better. Correct. It can actually take out more of the signal noise such that you can actually uh, now uh, receive a signal where it would not have been possible in the past, right? So actually, AI is not only at the use case level for us at Qualcomm, it's actually at the level of every technology for audio, for video, for graphics, for security, right? That's right. All the technologies that we drive. Clem, uh, you also interact with a lot of developers, obviously, that's, that's your job. Uh, what do you see on the horizon? What kind of things is the community excited about in terms of, let's say, the next three to five years? I mean, the overall technology trends, I, I don't want to get like too technical here, is uh, the technique of transfer learning, uh, which is starting to take over the whole AI field, right? So transfer learning is the ability for models to be pre-trained on a very large corpus of, of data uh, on any given task. And then you can um, either use these models right away, or you can fine tune them for any other uh, simpler task in a way on a very much smaller data set, right? Transfer learning as a machine learning technique um, is starting, started with NLP, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's what powered the democratization of, of NLP for the past few years. Starting to make its way into other modalities, starting to make its way into speech, right? Like speech to text, speech mm -hmm. segmentation, yeah. starting to make its way into computer vision right, object recognition, uh, image classification, uh, image segmentation. Um, it's starting to make its way into uh, multimodal tasks, like can you uh, create an image by describing it, yeah. right? Can you ask a question about, about a video? Uh, that is, in my opinion, uh, the biggest trends uh, of, of the past two years, and it's going to be the biggest trend in, in the next five years. I think in five years, most of the machine learning uh, models out there will be transfer learning uh, models. And that's super exciting because they have new capabilities, uh, but also new opportunities for them to be uh, smaller, more compressed, to be trained on smaller data sets, uh, thanks of the unique uh, characteristics and capabilities of, of transfer learning. Actually, it's also and that works, also is uh, going to have a massive impact on cost, right? Because uh, you know, the cost of, trans, uh, of teaching, or training something like GPT-3 is just astronomical, millions and millions of dollars to train yeah. the model. Um, you actually have two, so, two parallel kind of like uh, movements. On one side, the uh, models are getting much, much bigger. Right, we're mm. talking hundreds of, yeah. uh, you know, billions of uh, trillions almost now uh, parameters for for a model for the pre-training, right? But the beauty of these models is that they can be shared uh, with uh, so many companies. Uh, they can be used for so many different tasks that um, at the end, if you look at the community usage of, of these models and the compute needed uh, for each company, it's actually getting getting smaller. So it's a very interesting kind of like a field uh, dynamic where obviously these models are getting bigger, but at the same time, uh, you see this massive democratization that we talked about because companies uh, 
are actually more able to use these models. Actually, I would add that, you know, the, exactly what Clem is talking about. So we're looking at a lot more personalization on the device that we can do with some of the techniques that he's talking about, right? So you can actually have a voice assistant now on the device, in your car, anywhere, basically you can converse with without any problem, right? I mean, that's a great example. And then with that, you are able to actually get to a point where there is some degree of learning on the device too. Yeah. We have enough yeah. capability on the device now to start to actually head in that direction too in the future. Very exciting. Well, I think yeah. all of these developments and uh, innovations will make AI much more tangible and useful in so many different aspects of our lives that uh, it's going to be it's going to be a fun ride. And I really appreciate this conversation. Let's do this again. Maybe we can do this in person next time. That would be fun once it's safe. It'd be great. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. We'll invite you to our I'm, campus here. <laughs> I, I, I look forward to it very much. And meanwhile, we'll just continue to use technology to talk about technology. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right. Thank you very, very much. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Thank very you. Nice everyone. to see you guys. Bye, guys. Thank you.